Hey runners, it is Marathon Monday, April 20th, and I say Marathon Monday to all of you who know what day this would normally be in April. That's right, Boston Strong, Boston Marathon. But unfortunately, due to the pandemic with coronavirus, the Boston Marathon has been pushed back to September 14th. I know this is a crazy, crazy time. Oh, so much has been going on for the past, how long has it been, guys? Uh, five weeks? Um, a month? Since basically the stay at home and the whole coronavirus just really has taken over our lives. Um, but anyways, today uh, we honor those who would have been participating, who will participate in the Boston Marathon later this fall, hopefully, fingers crossed, that it will still run on September 14th. But uh, typically the third Monday in Boston, in April that is, uh, is uh, known as uh, Patriots Day, but to us runners, it's Boston Marathon. Um, yeah, I just, uh, wow. This is the first time since I really got into running and really started following the Boston Marathon, gosh, back in 1995. Uh, it's been 25 years, yeah. Um, I'll have to tell you a story some other time about how I kind of got into that. Um, little, known, little known fact, I've never qualified for the Boston Marathon, although, although I um, did make a couple attempts um, the closest I ever got was 339 back in, I believe it was 2000, uh, December 2000. And I needed to run, I believe it was a 310. Uh, so that was tough. <laughs> um, but the Boston Marathon to me is the single most, single greatest marathon. That's just my opinion. Um, there's tons of other good marathons out there. But... It's a very unique marathon. If you don't know, the Boston Marathon is really the only marathon that you have to qualify in order to run it. Uh, besides the Olympic Marathon, yeah, the Boston Marathon would be um, something that runners could achieve uh, to qualify and race. Um, that's, I guess, in part why I like it so much. Um, just for the fact that people are trying to qualify, and a lot of people qualify, so much so that it used to be years ago, decades ago, um, you know, people were getting in, but it, it, it was tough to get in, and um, you just had to hit a qualifying mark, and, you know, whatever that time was, you qualified, and you, you basically got into the Boston Marathon, but few years ago, um, they changed it to where now, since there are a lot more people running, which is a great thing, don't get me wrong, and a lot of people are striving for the Boston Marathon to get in, that they have to limit the number of participants, you know, close to that 25, 30,000 runners that we see um, year in and year out. So what they have done is if you qualify in a time that is 20 minutes or faster than your qualifying times, uh, then you can register basically like the first day that it opens up. And it usually opens up in September. And then after that, I believe it goes to 10 minutes faster than your uh, qualifying time and five minutes. However, if the spot fills up before it even gets to the 10 minute mark or five minute mark, then those who still have met their qualifying times are not let in. So yes, some people don't like that. To me, I think it's fair. I've never raced it before. I've never qualified, but I still think it's fair. I think because it's a unique race in itself, there's so much history. Um, really the oldest uh, marathon next to the Olympic marathon. So um, if, if you haven't... Um, looked up the Boston Marathon before. There's tons of books out there. I definitely encourage you to do so uh, and, and see what the um, the hype is all about. But anyways, 
Um, I'm sure there's lots of runners across the country, around the world really, that are honoring the Boston Marathon by going out and doing um, a run. Um, for my wife and I this morning, we actually decided to kind of follow on Strava uh, Run and Rabbit, which is an apparel uh, company for runners. And they've got some challenge, which I didn't quite do. I didn't I didn't meet the, uh, I believe you have to climb like 90, 93 feet uh, in a half a mile, which is pretty steep. Uh, but they want to kind of like mimic Heartbreak Hill, which is around that like 20, 21-ish miles uh, into the Boston Marathon. So if you do that, you post your, um, your run or walk. Uh, of at least 2.62, at least 2.62 miles, um, you're entered in like some giveaways. Um, my wife's doing that. Uh, I just went out and just did a very easy 2.62 mile run. And um, that's how I'm supporting. And of course, you know, we're wearing our Boston Strong shirts that uh, we got back in ooh, 2014. I had to think about that for a second. That was the last time my wife, who has actually raced it twice um, and has uh, really qualified for the Boston Marathon in every single marathon she's run in since 2002, which was her first marathon um, years before we got married. Um, she's just a very talented runner, and I guess she's my mill ticket <laughs> to Boston, which I really love. I love going out there. Um, not a cheap trip, but definitely worth it, um, and congratulations to all those uh, who have qualified and to those who are trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon, definitely keep um, keep digging, uh, go for it. It's just, uh, I just, I wish it was today. I really, really wish it was today because I love watching it. I used to take the day off from work. Last year I didn't. Um, but, you know, I don't want to know who wins it. I want to come home, record it, and, and, and watch it. But, I guess that will have to wait for a few more months down the road until September 14th rolls around. So um, it will be exciting. So uh, yeah, so what else happened uh, over the weekend? Uh, speaking of running, we took part in a virtual um, race. Now virtual races are blown up um, all over the world. Um, as you know, with the pandemic, uh, we can't participate in uh, large gatherings, um, races, you know. So a lot of people, companies, running groups have gotten really creative and have put out uh, virtual races. You know, it could be really any distance, but uh, we've seen 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, and even the marathon taking place. So uh, my wife and I... Um, have participated now and I've done two and I believe my wife's done three. Um, in one of my videos, I mentioned the Rambling Runner. Um, he's, he does a podcast. Um, he's got some great information. Um, you know, speaks to all kinds of runners, um, pros and, and non-pros, um, and just really loves running and has put on uh, basically like a four series virtual race, starting with the 5K, 10K, um, the half was uh, over the weekend, and then the marathon's coming up here uh, middle of May. But I um, did his uh, 5K, and basically I created a course, and we went out and raced it. It was not an easy course, um, very, very tough, but we did it, and we had fun. Um, that one, I stopped twice. Uh, my wife kind of got lost a little bit or, um, no, actually something happened, I think with her watch. So she stopped. And the second time I had stopped to catch my breath. It was just, uh, it, it was tough. I mean, to do a virtual race by yourself, um, what was tough. I think my wife was out there, my sister-in-law, of course we were social distancing at, at least six feet. It was farther than that because the gap was pretty big all around, um, but it was very hard to do. And I, I stopped my watch uh, when I stopped, which I shouldn't have done. I know because if you're racing, the clock keeps going. 
Uh, so that was kind of a debacle. I think I ran, no, I know I ran 2449 based on my watch, stopping it a couple times. However, this weekend, uh, my wife had designed a 5K course for um, another virtual race. And I want to give shouts out to Seth Damore, uh, DGR. It's uh, the Damore Global Running Group that we are part of. And if you haven't seen Seth's uh, vlog on YouTube, the guy's fantastic. He's a, uh, a former University of Colorado runner uh, years ago and just loves running, loves to get in, in, the information out to um, all of his uh, viewers. And every day I start off my day by, uh, by watching Seth. Uh, it, you know, I wake up in the morning and I check my email, check out his uh, YouTube videos because he publishes it. Um, 5 a.m. his time in Denver. Um, and yeah, it's just a great way to start. But anyways, he had a, uh, a virtual race. Um, you could either do it on Saturday or Sunday of this last weekend. And you could participate in the 5K, 10K, half, or marathon. Um, yeah, crazy. So here is my bib. Shout out to uh, Seth again for organizing this and, um, and and really putting together that uh, that bib. I mean, it's really cool. Of course, I didn't wear it. Um, you know, doing the 5K, um, just you know, it's just plain printing paper, and probably would have maybe got mangled and destroyed. So I wanted to save it, and I will put it back somewhere, either behind me in the wall or on the other side where we have um, some more racing um, plaques and things like that that my wife, mainly my wife, has, uh, has, a, has a accumulated. I've got a couple um, of my own. But yeah, it was a great race. Let me tell you something. Going into this second virtual race before that, um, my wife and I had a conversation about how some people are getting PRs in virtual races and we just really couldn't fathom how people are doing this when they're running by themselves. Personally, when I'm racing in a setting where there's runners around, it just, it gets me motivated and it pushes me more. Doing these virtual races on your own, it is very tough. I don't know anyone who disagree with me, um, but if you're one of those handful that, that find it easier than racing with a group of runners, kudos to you. Um, so coming into this, I thought, there's no way. But I did not get a PR. However, um, I ran a hell of a race. Um, I actually had to look back. I have on my spreadsheet my races from years ago when I started tracking it. And believe it or not, this 5K time for me was my fastest 5K since February 2016. That's four years, right? Wow. I was thinking it was three years, but yeah, 2016. Let me double check because I got it up here. If that's the case, that's a long time to run well when it's a virtual race. Um, yeah, 2016. So my official time yesterday was 2357. It is a 743 pace. I'm looking here and I'll just quickly glance. Um, there was only one race and I threw this out the window because it was definitely short. I didn't cut the course short, but a lot of people found that the course is short. And I know it was short because of the time. There's no way that I was in shape to run this time. But it was 22.55 is the time that I got, um, which would have been a 7.23 pace. And as much as I would love that, and I have run that many years ago, years and years ago, ah, you know, it was short. So I, I'm throwing that one out the window, even though it goes down as a 5K. So I'm taking the one from February 2016, um, to be exact, February 7, 2016, so four years, that's right, four years um, since I ran 
faster than I did yesterday. And that race, I ran a 23.44. And then when I go back in time even further, my next fastest time close to that would be 23.58, the same race, the pancake race in February 8th, 2015, 23.58. Still one second slower than yesterday's virtual. <sighs> Mind blown. I don't know. I guess uh, either A, I am sandbagging my actual races, and believe me, I am not. Um, I am going out there with effort. My breathing is very labored in these races. Um, when I ran yesterday, I was having that same kind of breathing, but surprisingly, I was not redlining it like I would normally do. Close, but not redlining it. Um, so that's encouraging, right? When we are getting back out there for our races, whenever that is, hopefully here in the next several months, but we'll see. But when we do, it'll be interesting to see. Now, I don't know if I'll run as quick um, because we live in Phoenix and it's getting hot. So much so that by Wednesday, we're supposed to be mid 90s. And then we've got a few hundred degrees, 101 degrees coming up like this weekend. Yeah, it's nuts. We should be in the maybe 85, 86 range for averages. Yeah, Mother Nature says, boom, you're getting hit with heat because you had a great winter and here you go. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I still run pretty good in the summer. Um, I think I'm a, a good runner. Uh, probably need to push myself a little bit more though and dig deep. You know, when you get to that part where you're just hurting, people call it the pain cave. We all get there. Um, but it's pushing through that. Um, I have pushed through a little bit in the past, but it is, it's just something that mentally I need to um, really just conquer. And I know that if I can do that, um, I, can, I can get even quicker, even at um, the age of 50, um, which I'm proud to say that I am and uh, fortunate enough to still be able to run and, and, and enjoy this, um, hopefully for many, many more years to come. So I hope that you guys had a good weekend. And if you participated in any virtual races or, you know, just went out for a run, um, definitely let me know down at the comments below. Love to hear um, what you guys are up to. Or if you have any plans um, in the near future, maybe you've got something else coming up next weekend or the weekends to follow, um, virtual races and such, definitely let me know. Um, love to hear about it. So I want to wish everyone safe times here. Um, you know, we're still practicing the stay at home here in our state, in Arizona and want to make sure that we are healthy and uh, protecting ourselves um, so that you know we can come back stronger um, when we're all able to resume and get back to some uh, sense of normalcy here soon. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you have any comments, again, please comment down below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so down below. Love to hear from you and um, yeah, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Happy Marathon Monday, Boston. Talk to you guys later.